The Malonglo Observatory Synthesis Telescope, also known as MOST, is the largest radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. Conspiracy theorists could claim that MOST serves as a landing spot for UFOs, but really the construction's purpose is of a different nature. MOST's 18,000 square meters of collection area enables to see deep into space and explore the universe of 10 billion years ago. It is operated by the School of Physics of the University of Sydney and located near the Molonglo River, 30 kilometers east of Australia's capital, Canberra. Most is sensitive to radio waves with a frequency of 843 MHz. Unlike optical telescopes, radio telescopes are able to see objects such as clouds of hot gas around galaxies or jets of plasma being ejected by neutron stars. Also, they are able to see much further into space than visible light telescopes. MERST has detected radio waves from objects that have been traveling through the universe for 10 billion years. Unlike conventional radio telescopes, MERST is parabolic through exactly a mile from end to end. The two arms are almost 800 meters long and have more than 7,500 separate antenna elements. This computer system here actually runs a telescope, points the telescope where you want it to go and holds it on track for 12 hours to make an image. It's like holding the shutter on your camera open for 12 hours. A complex compensation system of phases and delays ensures that the incoming signals from the over 7,000 detectors are synchronized and processed through numerous computer systems to create the final images of the sky. And all the black dots on this screen, they are galaxies. There are no stars in there. So they're radio galaxies that are very old. Only the east-west arm is used. The north-south arm is a relic from the One Mile Mills Cross Telescope, which operated from 1967 to 1978 and has done much pioneering radio astronomy. It was a 408 MHz radio telescope designed and built by Bernard Mills and his collaborators. Behind me you can see the north-south arm or part of the north-south arm and in its original configuration the telescope was a cross. That was because it was a transit instrument and it would be set up to point it to a single point in the sky and then you would wait for that object to go past that point. Later on it became a tracking instrument, the north-south arms were discarded and at the feet point of the east-west arms it was able to scan in an east-westerly direction and so it could then follow an object in the sky for its field of view for a period of about 12 hours or more. Among the many galaxies and black holes, most has been systematically observing some famous objects such as the 1987 supernova and the Vela Pulsar. This neutron star is situated at a distance of about 1,500 light years in the constellation Vela. It is surrounded by hot gas and shoots through space powered by a jet emitted from one of its rotational poles. With a diameter of 12 miles and a mass close to that of the Sun, it spins around its own axis 10 times per second. Bernard Mills and his team of radio astronomers were the first to detect the Vela Pulsar in 1968. Its detection supplied the direct observational proof that supernovas form neutron stars. We began searching, within a few days started to pick up pulsars. One of the first was the very strong Vela Pulsar, uh, 0833-45. We could have discovered it years earlier, 1965-66, if we had listened, but we didn't listen, we'd merely recorded charts. The listening of the Vela is great, it's a brrrr, 11 per second pulsing surging. And this caught the attention of a musician. We know that that successfully went over live from the sky, phone line to Perth, out to this concert group in real time. <laughs> In 2007, most completed project SUMSS, the radio imaging survey of the entire southern sky. 
but most is nowhere near to having its plug pulled. Since 2003, the telescope serves as a prototype for new technologies relevant to the next generation radio telescope. The SKA is an international project to build a radio telescope which will be 50 times more sensitive and 10,000 times faster than any existing radio telescope. It will have about 1 million square meters of collection area dispersed on a spatial distance of 3,000 kilometers in diameter. This will revolutionize the study of the early universe and could finally find the answer on how all of this could have happened.